Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to Accelerate Conference 2023, Pastor Yemi David. Everything that has breath in the house, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Good morning, everyone all over the world. Before you get seated, I'd like you to greet 20 people around you. Shake their hands, smile, appreciate them. I like your height. You are taller than Zacchaeus. I, I like you. You, you. You're better than Judas. <laughs> Uh, just 20 people, okay? Find 20. And make sure somebody is smiling. Compliment them. I like your face cap. It's facing me very well, you know? I like your hairdo. It's so fine. It looks like showers of blessings. Oh, you are so tall. Taller than Zacchaeus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray Posh, I like your sneakers. I like your... Oh, oh, it's sneaking, sneaking. If you're in the Korodu, I hope you are greeting somebody where you are. Or you're in London Church. Glory to God. Can you appreciate Pastor Godman and Pastor Bola this morning? Thank you for all you do for the body of Christ. Thank God for your meekness, humility, and resilience. Uh, I, I love you. And Pastor Bola, you're just good friends, great friends, covenant friends. Uh, life is so good having you around us. And greetings from Bimbo and Global Impact family. And I want to celebrate all our pastors, Pastor Debo, all our pastors, Pastor Kola, politician. <laughs> Are you putting your hands together for them? Now, 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 the, the leaders around you are either fertilizing you or burning down what you are doing. So if the work is growing like this, I think we ought to celebrate them and their spouses. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, everyone in the various expressions, we believe you'll be attentive today. Uh, our lives will not be slow anymore. Uh, the yoke of stagnation is broken. Certain things you couldn't catch the first half, you will catch it the second half. Uh, for somebody here in this second half, you will sit in the middle of your room and be shedding tears of joy. Amen. I can hear you louder. Amen. Amen. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Precious people, as we take our seat. Uh, just a bit of recap uh, for those who missed yesterday. Get the CD or get the download. As we're talking about speed. Speed. Somebody say speed. It's another word for accelerate, and we try to lay a good foundation talking about um, when, when, when God wants to restore us, uh, he sends us speed. I think Jacob needed that speed anyway. He was already 40 years when we were looking for a wife for him. <laughs> so God gave him speed, and Rebecca showed up. And I believe for people in this place or hearing my voice, if you're trusting God for marital breakthrough, uh, the robber will meet the road this second half. If that person is in Poland or Sweden, or in Agbara, the Holy Spirit, by the ministry of angels, we order their steps together. Uh, if it's your old schoolmate that you're supposed to marry, uh, it will show up. Uh, that amen is not okay. So God is restoring people, and we said, um, the wind of the Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit wants to give people instruction. Uh, and this instruction is not always um, something that is... Um, you know, spectacular that God will now say, Yemi, Yemi, Yemi. How many times did I call you? And then Yemi will now say, eh, three times. <laughs> no, it can come through any of the sessions. This morning, Pastor Bola blessed us so much. Let's appreciate Pastor Bola. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you look very nice also. I love um, that. Are you putting your hands together for Pastor Bola? Now, now I, I met the second half of the message and I picked a lot of instructions. Sometimes in the message, it's just a line that is yours. But you will not miss your own line in the name of Jesus Christ. So instruction can come through the time of offering, through the charge, 
but you must be attentive. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagle. It takes divine direction to mount up with wings as eagle. And then we emphasized a lot about laying aside every weight. I, I believe it's a major call for the second half. You evaluate the first half. And what are the things that slowed you down? Maybe too much engagements, too much, too much. Things that are not productive. Uh, there's a scripture pastor uh, uh, quoted yesterday. Uh, all things are lawful, but not all things are productive or expedient. So, certain things you do, they're not bad, but it's not helping you in terms of fulfilling destiny. You know, that's what they call power court. You say, if your left eye causes you to sin, what do you do? Uh -huh. So that you can enter into life. Now, life in this context talks about um, uh, the unusual edge, accelerating, or speed. Uh, and Jesus used the hand and the eyes. It means there are things that are very close to you. Very seemingly there. Things that you invest your time, your energy in. You have to butcher them. <laughs> you have to because you need enough energy and time to pour into the things that really matter this second half. Audit and edit. Look at your friends. Look at how you spend your weekend. Look at how you spend your day. There are certain things that you can just say, okay, this one for the next six months, I will resume you in January 2024, but I need this hour or these three hours and pour this into that. And then by December, you'll be a different person. So it could be uh, an attitude you need to let go. Just an attitude. Sometimes an attitude, you know. Just one attitude. You, just, you don't greet people well, you know, for whatever reason. For whatever reason. Maybe because you were born in uh, Lekki. You know? <laughs> and then you now feel superior to those who are born in Ajangbadi. <laughs> for what reason? You know? And then God has placed answers in the heart of the person that was born in Ajangbadi. And then because you are too proud, you can't ask the person. You know, many of the things we are looking for are hidden in people we don't like. Mm. So breakthrough is not for the arrogant. Sustainable breakthrough is not for the prideful. Zacchaeus climbing the tree was a test of humility. Go and check it. He was a rich man and a tax collector. Most tax collectors are very rich in Nigeria too. For a rich man to humble himself and run and climb the tree, then you need breakthrough. So that might be your own weight. Prideful. I saw something in Isaiah 14, verse 12. You're just too, you don't, you, you, you can't be corrected, you can't be exalted, you can't, and then you are just stuck. You've reached a particular place, uh, you're plateaued. And God is saying, let go, let go, let go, let go. Uh, he said, how you are falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you will weaken the nations. Verse 13, for you have said, where? You can be rich and proud, you can be poor and proud. That one is very bad. <laughs> very, very bad. You don't have anything. Things have not been okay for, and you are still doing, you know. He said, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side. How many eyes do we, do we have there? Well, three, right? Next verse, verse 4. Verse 14, sorry. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be... Now, how many eyes? Five. So you want to know, in case you're asking, I'm not proud, but how do you talk? I, I, I did everything, I, I. You, you are so self-centered. Everything seems about you. And some men have this virus. It's a very dangerous virus. You can put the family in jeopardy. I, 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 I will do this, I do that. I will tell pastors, don't be saying my church. How can you say my church? It's our ministry. Even God said, let us make man. Almighty God said, let us, us. And then you are saying I. <laughs> Look at this service. I mean, we are preaching. But there are people on the sound system, right? The console. That guy is very powerful. He can disturb this message. <laughs> yeah? Right? If I say something that affects him negatively, I will show you that I'm important <laughs> in this ministry. And just to tweak something there, I just be talking, and he'll be telling him what's happening. He'll say, <laughs> <laughs> but yet, he said, I've done something. I'm, I matter to this ministry. Put your hands together for the guys 
our instrumentalists, the group. And the junior church people, let's put our hands together for them. Junior church. Woo. If you put um, 22 year olds in this meeting, <laughs> two year old, male and female, and just release them, just to be with us in this service, you will see whether the service will continue. So when people are in the junior church helping with the kids, with the traffic, when you go to pick your children, celebrate them. So it's not my church, it's our church or his church. So look at the next verse. Verse 15 says, uh, yet you shall be what? And there was somebody else in heaven. He humbled himself unto death. Then God has highly what? Look at the difference. This one he said, I will, I will, I will, and then you shall be brought down to hell. Somebody else, ah, I will humble myself. I will obey you. He went unto death. So God has highly. So if there's any unusual edge, you need humility to learn, to relearn, to unlearn, to listen to instructions, to be corrected, to grow. Anger, excessive anger. For some people, it's envy. For somebody else, it's unforgiveness. You just don't like your mother-in-law. I, 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 you keep saying, I just hate that woman. I don't know. But you saw her before you married. You have married. You are married. You got to forgive her today. It's hindering your blessing. Unforgiveness places you in the hands of tormentors. Business torments. Financial torments. Or you hate your ex. Somebody broke... You broke up. They broke it. <laughs> Relationship broke. And you are still angry with Johnson. Leave Johnson alone. Let Johnson go. And in fact, if there's any prayer point, be praying for Johnson's future and see how yours will be settled. These are little things that create big problems. Little hinges swing huge doors. And then we said we should ask God for speed. Genesis 24 verse 12. A man was asked to seek a wife for Isaac, as the Hebrews call him, or Isaac, as we say. And then he was very strategic in the King James Version. He says, send me good speed this day. And then before he had finished speaking, Rebecca showed up. And then we prayed a lot about that yesterday. I think we're going to see do more on angel power today. I feel I should dwell a bit more on the ministry of angels. Can we have that verse in the King James Version for many that perhaps were not following yesterday? If you grasp this well, the future is settled. It's an advantage. Angel power. You are not afraid of the future. When spirits are your guide and guard, you are safe. He says, and he said, oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, what? Send me good speed. It's as simple. Lord, send me good speed in the second half of the year. Apparently, Abraham prayed this prayer before the servant left. So the spirit had gone ahead to organize the right woman for Isaac. So there's some business stuff you are getting involved next half, or, or travels, or for our children as they resume a new session in September or whatever time. You send angels ahead. When we pray in our family, we ask the angel to organize the right teacher. And even the people that sit with it, because <laughs> the people that sit around your children, they matter. Oh, they matter. You can say something else at home. And one boy beside her can be saying something else. One day her daughter came home and just said one word. Ah! Where did you pick this word from? She did it like this. Is somebody in class? I didn't teach you this. They pick it up somewhere. One wrong teacher can damage a child for five years. But one right one can fertilize for 15 years. So you release angels. I heard... Before we get to August, September, let the angels, as they are planning which teacher will pick up this particular class, and even your staff, if you own a business, different aspects. Release angels don't sleep. Spirits don't sleep. Give them work to do. Many of our angels have been so idle, and they are angry with you. They've been reporting you to Jesus. Why did you send me to him? I'll be standing, standing. My leg is paining me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Exodus 23, 20. They go ahead of us and bring us into a place of death. It's an unusual age that we have. Behold, I send an angel before thee. Another version says, ahead of you to keep thee in the way and to bring you into that place I have prepared. Wow. 
send them ahead. They prepare the place, and then you arrive and just realize that things are just falling into place. They preserve us from death and destruction. You shall live and not die. I've seen you this month of June. You'll be alive by December of this year. Psalms 91 verse 10. The plane that will drop, you will not enter inside it. Behold, I mean, sorry, uh, Psalm 91 verse 10. Uh, it says, Psalm 91 verse 10, for he shall give his angels. Psalms 91 verse 10. I think verse 10. Verse 10. Thank you. There shall no, can we say this together everywhere in the world? One, two, go. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague. How, verse 11, for he shall give his angels, what? To keep me where? So who is in charge of your flights? Of your trips? That was my revel revelation many years ago. Who is in charge? It's not you. Angels are in charge. So when I'm flying, Lord, thank you for this. But before I fly, angel, let them pick the right plane. Because they pick those things, the right uh, pilot and the crew. Even the people that were passenger with me. Some people's legs are not good. Mm. <laughs> May you not enter a bus with too many bad legs. <laughs> In Yoruba land, when people get married, they wash their feet as they're entering the family. In case there's anything, enter. You know when people enter our lives, it's rather they fertilize us, right? Just because that things are going better and better and better and better. Uh, it's the leg that came in. You know, Jonah was in the boat, and what happened? The boat was going down. Uh, it doesn't mean Jonah was bad, but not here. Do you understand? Not here. One wrong person can ground the business. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. In a in core team, one wrong person. And at times, the Holy Ghost will ask you to move somebody out, not because they are bad. Jonah was not a sinner, but he had some things to resolve with God. And if you, if you don't, they were throwing out their luggage. Go and check it out. Throwing into the sea. That's not the problem. The real problem was asleep. <laughs> and they brought him out. And they said, sir, the Lord has fallen on you. What should we do? And he told them, God told me to go to Yanokpaja, but I came to Lekito Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> go to Nineveh. No, I will go to Tashish. And God said, okay, we shall see who will arrive. So they, he told them, and they asked, they asked, so what should we do? He said, throw, throw me out. Like, fire me. I, I'm not supposed to be in this place. <laughs> and they were so full of sentiments, which is a hindrance to speed. Mm, sentiment. When you need to cut some things off, you are just, how would my cousin feel? What would my mother say if I do this to my brother? <laughs> and scripture says, the wind was contrary, and the, the storm got worse. And they said, ah, lest we should perish for this man's sake, they picked him up and threw him out. And threw him out. Now, throw, throwing him out doesn't mean you are killing him. Let him go and resolve with God. But scripture says the storm ceased. I pray that there's any Jonah in or around you that needs to go, your eyes will open to see them. Your eyes will be open to seeing them. And they receive strength to take the right steps in the name of Jesus Christ. Because everything just stops until he moves out or she moves out. Onto greater things, onto other things. Angels are released through the voice of God's word. Psalms 103, verse 20. When you want to experience the unusual age of angel power, you give voice to God's word. Bless the Lord, ye is angels that excel in. They are swifter than demons. That's why it's an, it's an edge, an unusual edge. When the devil was planning to slaughter the young people two years and below, when Jesus was born, remember, an angel of the Lord has spoken to Joseph, move this child out. So angels are swifter than demons. So whatever the devil is planning, that is own business. You must deploy your angels. It's very important. It says, it says they excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto what? The voice of his word. You have to give voice to God's word. You are a giver. You tithe. You give offerings. You advance God's kingdom. Then you speak the right things concerning your finances. My heavens are open. 
Finances are rushing at me like never before. I have a hundredfold harvest. Just as Isaac, you speak concerning your children. All my children are taught of the Lord. Great shall be their peace. All. All is all. There is no black sheep in your family. Don't ever allow such doctrines to enter you. Uh, there is always one black sheep. If you believe that, you allow devil into one of the children. And you're expecting anyway. And they even ask you, say, eh, he's like the black sheep among them. I don't have any black one. They're all white. <laughs> all our children shall be what? All. First born, second born, last born. All means all. And if the enemy is trying to tamper with one, you address it. All means all. Get out, Satan. All our children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. And every tongue that's rising against me in this office, conspiring, I condemn. Angels move forth. You give voice. That is how we experience dominion. We have the edge. There is no need to envy any unbeliever. You, your, our lives should be so attractive that they want to serve God that you serve. The word of God is that potent. But you give voice to the word. As you give voice to the word, angels, they enjoy it. They just move into action. No weapon fashioned or formed, spiritual, political, any weapon formed against me. None of them prosper. There are times you wake up in the morning, you feel those vibes. You see, when people think negative about you or they're like gossiping, especially believers, <laughs> against you, it affects you. It's sending wrong signals to you. You feel sometimes in the morning, you wake up, they've been talking about you maybe overnight or the previous evening. When you feel that you wake up, you give God praise, you present the blood of Jesus Christ, you cast down every tongue that is rising against you in judgment. Because they sat, maybe family meeting, see what he did, see what she did. And they will say some things, all those statements are like judgment on your life. Now you have to cast down every tongue that's rising against you in judgment. And sometimes they even go further to plan, no weapon! That is fashioned against me prospers. You use God's word to express dominion. And when you do that, angels move forward. Now, angels are also stifled or bound by negative words. Numbers 14, 28. This is the area where we need discipline. Many people come to church. We pray a lot. We, you know, give. We serve. But you, you need to tame your tongue. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have what? Spoken in my ears. He said, some of them said, we are not able. Look at the next verse, verse, verse 20, 29. Your carcass shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your own number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Verse 30. Doubtless you shall, because they said we cannot make it. Said, Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell in. Dwell in. Except who? They spoke differently. Caleb and Joshua said, We are well able. The other guy said, Look at giants. Look at the economy. Look at the president. Look at the senators. Look at this. How my, how my, the next four years. Mutigbe, mutigbe. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen. Joshua and Caleb said, ah, We are well able. Somebody said, We are well able. My second half is far more glorious than my first half. My end of the year is better than the beginning of the year. Ha, greater things are happening for me. My night is becoming as noonday. You speak it. Heavy stuff. Revelation that you have carried. You speak it as you have spoken in my ear. Look, if you keep speaking sickness, when it's coming your way, angels can't stop it. Because you have bound the angel. This is what you ordered for. It's not that the angel will put sickness on you. The things you have said will not make him intervene. Oh, ah, this nation is killing me. Never. You will not die. Ah, people die before they die. You go to a funeral. Instead of you commiserating with them and encouraging them, in you start saying, ah, you see this life is binti. <laughs> this life is, uh, what's binti in English? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, he says, this, this life is small. My life is not small. This, ah, eh? I'm destined for greatness. He said, uh, anybody can die at any time. Ah! You have registered. That way. 
You are giving Satan any time attack. I'm telling you, death and life, I do what's kill. I'm begging you, to, these are, they look so small, but people talk and even over their children. Any small thing, look at your hair, you don't even know anything. Mm-hmm. Over your own child. My pastor said one day the child came home uh, and didn't do well in school. He told him to kneel down and quoted 72 scriptures on his head. 72. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he. <laughs> By the next, he came first. He, of course, your cells are arranged. Your brain cells are arranged. Everything conforms to the word. The word does not conform to anything. Yeah. 72 on his head. Stop cursing your children. Stop cursing your legs. This leg is killing me. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I will eat the good of the land. Are you understanding me? Uh, we pray for our country. We trust God for national transformation. But while we are at it, <laughs> I we eat the good of the land. I we eat the best of the land. My steps are ordered. Glory to God. Please speak right. Mothers, when you're under pressure, not, and couples, don't any small thing. I give us here. Many that said that after 10 years, something happens to scatter the marriage. You have been sowing the seed. Any little thing. I don't know why I even married you. What is it, Seth? What is it? Any small thing. You, you and your family, I don't even know what led me there. Oh, what is it? You know, I don't know. I hate you. You know, you know, one, one guy came to see me. I said, when they were cutting, he, he told me with his mouth that my wife is an angel. She, he said it. My wife to be old, That when she comes to visit him during their courtship, he just irons all his clothes. He said, it's an angel. I said, praise God. I said, just prepare for marriage. Huh? You know. <laughs> After marriage, some few, just less than one year, this same person said, she's a witch. <laughs> I said, welcome. Marriage, two I said, angel don't, <laughs> angel don't change. Anytime you use a negative word and you realize it, you need to withdraw it and replace it. Mm. I hope your pride will, not, will help you accept these things. Because some people don't believe this. They say, oh, no, you know, just hyping them. You know, it's motivational, you know, just to get the people, uh, you know. But the country is very bad. They don't know. Mm. Mm. I shall have whatsoever I say. I shall have whatsoever I say. The future is brighter than the past. Better years ahead of you. Better months ahead of you. Our children will be greater than us a million times. You shall have whatsoever you say. Let me close. That when you are praying for speed, ask God for his right hand to rest on you. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I think Psalms 118 verse 16. The right hand of the Lord. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. (laughs) Psalms 118, I think verse 16. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth what? So is that right hand that needs to rest on you for this second half? Sometimes I was asking, why is it not your left hand? Because I'm left-handed. He said, follow the word. I said, yes, sir. 1 Kings 18, verse 44. So as I begin to round up, we're going to, you know, spend time in praying and worshiping, asking him, Lord, let your right hand rest on me. Elijah prayed, you know, God said, it's time for rain. He prayed and fasted. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he, he said, behold, there arise a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up, see do up, prepare that chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with what? And the wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Okay, next uh, verse. And the hand of the Lord came upon Bolanle, upon Joshua, upon Ezekiel. Upon Musa, upon Yemi, and the hand of the Lord. And he gathered up his loins and ran ahead. 
ran ahead. He, he, he got to the place before the king's chariot. Do you understand that? You can imagine the chariot of the king. How excellent, how the engineering of Ahab's chariot. And Ahab was running, running. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he outran the chariots. There will be supernatural speed. Yeah. So when the hand of the Lord comes on you, business wise, there will be greater speed. Yeah. Career wise, there will be greater speed. Yeah. The right hand of the Lord. In Acts chapter 11, verse 21, even when it comes to evangelistic efforts, uh, outreaches as a ministry, when we ask for the hand of the Lord to be upon us, we have greater fruits. Sometimes when we're doing evangelism, outreaches, it's not as fruitful as it is because the hand of the Lord is not as, as asked for in that sense. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And what? A great number believed and turned just find that more people are responding to the church. Instead of just stepping out with IVs or, you know, you know uh, either online or physical. But Lord, let your hand rest upon these efforts. And people will just be responding. The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. And the hand of the Lord comes in a place of worship and praises. It happened to one of those prophets. He wanted to prophesy. But the atmosphere was not conducive. And he said, bring me a mystery. And he brought someone. And as the person began to play, Scripture says, And the hand of the Lord came upon the prophet. Isaiah 54. Some years ago, uh, the Holy Spirit led us as a church to dealing with this. We had some major projects we were doing. And it looked like it was stuck because of the pandemic. And we know a lot of money, hundreds of millions, you know. And I said, Lord, this project will be delayed for more than necessary. How shall we do? Give me a word! Ah, we need help. He said, go to Isaiah 54. I know Isaiah 54. So I didn't obey him. My own thinking is, the answer cannot be in that place. I was expecting Zephaniah <laughs> or Zechariah <laughs> or Habakkuk. So I kept praying. He said, go to Isaiah 54. So verse 1. Isaiah 54, 1 says, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travel with child, for more are the children of the desolate, oh, than the children. He said, I said, okay, okay. What, what? Verse 2, look at verse 2. <laughs> verse 2 says, enlarge the place of your tent. I said, yes, that's what we want to do. Uh, let them stretch forth the curtains of the habit. Oh, spare not, lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy stakes. I said, Glory, verse 3, <laughs> verse 3, for you will break forth on the right hand, glory to God, and on the left, and your people will take over the last. This is what I want. And so what's the answer? The answer is in verse 1. Oh, verse 1, where? Sing, oh barren, sing. He said, I never said sing, go fruitful. No, no. The emptiness will require singing for a change. I said, oh, I said, if it's 40 days prayer and fasting, we are ready. He said, no, let the church sing. It wasn't easy at the beginning because I'll be looking at bills and I'll be singing, you are worthy, Lord. Say, hey, this thing, is it working? <laughs> Just to sing. And he said, the singing should not be, uh, you know, near my God to be. No. Loud praise. Jubilation like you have it. Celebration like it's in your hand. He says, sing, oh barren. He said, break forth into sing. And then he now said, he said, remember Paul and Silas now? They were in their darkest moment. They prayed. Oh yes. But the answer came when they were praising me. And they sang praises. And the prisoners heard them. Oh, so it's a loud praise. He said, maybe when you pray, angels can show up. But when you praise me properly, I show up. For I inhabit the praises of Israel. Gee, glory to God. How can we feed these 5,000 people? They are so much. And they said, we don't have anything. Send them away, Jesus. Send them away. Send them away. Let them go and find food. Just said, no, let's feed them. 
Oh, but we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. And Philip said, but what is this among so many? This first half, I prayed for 20 things. I've only seen two happen. What is this among so many? Just said, bring the five loaves of bread and two fish. And he himself knew what he would do. So what did he do? He took it and gave thanks. That shook me. Can you give thanks for five loaves? I thought he would have taken it. I said, Lord, we need your help. Lord, we, are, we need your help. Lord, give us breakthrough. Uh, if scripture has said that, may but said no. He gave thanks. He gave thanks. He gave thanks. Now, if you don't accept what God has done, it can never multiply. Stop despising your five loaves of bread and two fish. You're at your place of work. And in your mind, ah, I'm more qualified than this job. So when you go to work every day, it's more of murmuring and complaining. I don't like this job, if not for situation in our country. Until you accept it. It's not where you're going, but Lord, I'm grateful. And I know you will take me from here to higher height. Accept your wife. Accept her. Accept your husband. Don't stop looking at somebody else's husband or wife or somebody. And if you're in this country, accept your country. Stop. You're, you're, you're here. You don't even have passport. You don't even have visa. And you are reacting. You better accept. God won't do anything until you accept it. I know it's five loaves of bread and two fish, but bring it. This is where it starts. You are here. Accept your country. Lord, thank you. But take us further. Accept, accept your height, accept your nose, your color, you're okay, accept it. Because without that gratitude, nothing moves. Nothing. I told some pastors in Worry or something, or Parako, I said, when churches are moving to another church, another venue, there's attitude of, because we are moving to a new place, they now begin to denigrate where they are. Their eyes are so much on the new place that where they are now begins to decay. I said, if you are like that, you will never move. You have to enjoy where you are well. While you, while you are building that, you move from glory to glory. You have to see that five loaves of bread and two fish as glory. And then it now moves you to a higher glory. You don't paint the place, the things are haggard, all because we are moving. No, you move from glory. So glorify that place. You have one office space and you are trusting God for it. Enjoy that place. And then be giving thanks. And then he multiplies. He, he took the five loaves of bread and, and you know, and gave thanks. It, it, it multiplied so much they had overflow. They had overflow. So we started singing. 21 days singing. I've never done that before. We pray and fast. Pray, praising God. By, of course, with revelation pumping in. The, the essence was there, so we just kept praising. The last day of the fast, on a Saturday evening, one of our guys called me. said, ah, pastor, I'm in Abuja. I'm about to pray for a property. He said, Lord, but the Holy Spirit said I should not buy that property. I should bring the money to the church. I said, what did you say? I said, are you sure? He said, yes. The Holy Spirit said I should bring the money for a project. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. He said, will you be at home on Monday morning, pastor? Ah, I was at home. I will be at home. I am home. <laughs> You're asking me. He brought money, foreign currency, starched. The first time I'll see them together like that. In that amount, together. And the project kicked off. And between December and April, we moved to the new place. So I know the praises. Is the leverage you need for speed. Are you ready to praise? Yeah. Nobody should be looking like we are praising him. You should lift your voice. If you don't even know the song, just be saying, thank you for your mercy. Rise up on your feet. We're going to praise. I need help here. Um, thank you, Lord. Mando se care ba sing le to se Prende son de la cambre de I'm gonna dance and praise him 
It doesn't matter what comes my way The greater one lives inside of me You say His name is Jesus I'm born a winner I'm born a winner More than a career More than a career I'm ahead I'm ahead I'm a skinner Who will the Holy Ghost One more time I'm gonna dance I'm gonna dance and praise it It doesn't matter into the second half of the year prophesy prophesy wherever you are prophesy 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 speak over your wife over your children abimbola you are blessed
speak over your children. Belumi, you are blessed. Shubomi, you are blessed. Demilade, you are blessed. Adasa, you are blessed. Speak over your ministry. Speak over your health from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Speak forth. Speak over your finances. I experience incredible blessings. I experience incredible blessings. I experience incredible blessings the second half. Angels, go forth, speak forth. My more than my mouth can testify. More than my mind can comprehend. Oh, I've seen the wonders of your good. And I'm so sure that this is not the end. Can we do it one more time? Oh, more than my mouth can testify. Hey. Father, thank you. I can tell, and I know it's your grace all my days. All my days I I can see, I can tell, and I know. It's your love. All through the second half, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2030, and beyond, you will be singing his praises. He will turn your morning, he has turned your morning into dancing. He has turned your morning into dancing.
to dance. Lift your hands and give it glory.